<clears throat> what is up guys, and of course, welcome to another TPU Wi-Fi battle versus of course Trev and the Long Island Goldlocks in a very, very interesting matchup actually. Now, sadly I can't do a team analysis here, so I'm going to do a rough rundown basically due to work and actually a few real life things going on. I sadly haven't been able to record anything this week, though this is clearly one of those priorities I get to time. Sadly, I don't have that much time. But a quick rundown here. Um, he was bringing Victini, Garchomp, Tangrowth, Ninetales, Gold, Bat, and Beware. Now, somewhere down the line here, I was expecting his Mira, Mega Aerodactyl, or his, uh, what do you call it? Word, 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 word. His uh, Dilmais or Dilmis to final place here for the matchup, mainly because it's so weak to Badland without that. And yeah, as you guys can see on my team, I did not bring Badland. I actually decided to bring something different. And um, yeah, I was really, really trusting this team because I, I went kind of overboard against Leo. So I decided to say a lot, lot simpler for this matchup. So we have Wakai Berry, Jellicent to be able to deal with his Victini. Scar Frostless to be able to deal with Garchop and Victini, who could very possibly be Scar first. Um, careful Tyranitar with a bit of speed investment of 86, mainly in case it's beware, it's weird. I can actually outspeed it and actually hurt it. Uh, then of course we got Excadrill, Super Simper, Air Balloon sets. Uh, Boswell with Roos and Cobberberry to be able to deal with, of course, flying hits, mainly, of course, from the Tangrove and the possible Mira Megarodactyl. And, of course, last but not least, a Scarf Guard War with Healing Wish, Moonblast, Psy Shock, and, of course, Shadow Ball for his Delmise and Victini to some extent, of course. So, very, very simple task here. Um, now, from the get-go, Victini seems to be his obvious lead, and I somewhere down the line need to find a way to get my rocks up. Uh, to, of course, punish Victini, because that Pokemon is annoying for me to be dealing with. It's always annoying to be dealing with a Victini in mind. That's kind of why I was scarfing the Frostlass, basically, to be able to take that down with you. But outside of that, I don't necessarily fear the rest of the matchup. Beware can be annoying with soaking hits, but I think I can do well towards it. So, uh, really, with all this in mind, I'm just going to lead up with us Jellicent here and try to soak whatever he goes for and retaliate as much as I can. So, yeah, with all that said, let's, of course, go into the game. So, we do predict right from the get-go here. As a lead-up, we do, of course, Necromedusa. Victini is his lead. Uh, I'm just going to go for a Shadow Ball, knowing that the only thing that can come in on Shadow Ball is Beware, and Beware is something I can, of course, Wisp on. So, as it goes for U-Turn, and I definitely don't think it's banded. It very likely it is scoffed, as stated. As it's switching long, of course, to Nine Tails, and I knew I have two options here. Snow warning, yes, that means that we have two things here. He's either going to go for Aurora Veal or go for a Moonblast. He's not going to go for Freeze Strike, seems very unlikely. So, I'm just going to switch in Tranitar. In case Aurora Veal is hitting the field, I'm kind of screwed in when it comes to overarching themes, since I'm actually I'm a hard hitting team with not necessarily that much stamina. So, Vrex is going to come in, set him to Sandstorm. He does actually go for Aurora Veal, which is great. And this is probably what I should have felt that I probably should have switched in my x drill here. Having Air Balloon on x drill kind of kind of forces you to not go for it uh, because you don't want to lose that accessibility of Air Balloon. As he's going to score a crit on me here with the Moon Blast. It doesn't do too much. Uh, it's not necessarily game decisive, but I was supposed to be able to take three Moon Blasts from Nine Tails without falling. That kind of got thrown out the window there. But he's going to bring in Sherry Bomb again. While U turn is super, super obvious because that's definitely going to KO Tyrantor from that range. I can't, of course, risk anything here. So I need to go to Jellicent again, trying to soak another U-turn. And, um, I mean, somewhere down the line, I felt that, you know, it probably isn't a Scarf set, since it's keep going for those U-turns. So Golbat comes in here back again, or back again, I was going to say, it's back, it's here. The Gold of Wang, that's quite a name, really. And I don't fear necessarily Golbat all that much. It goes for Toxic. It is unfortunate, though. But the thing is here... Uh, I can Will-O-Wisp it, which means that it has no way necessarily of beating my Boss Wall from a, or Boss Wall don't take more than 40% from a Braver from a Gold Bad once it burned. So with that said, I do whittle that Pokemon down and I felt that I have opportunity to of course get some recovery going on because I kinda need that. I mean Toxic is definitely annoying for me as Gold Bad of course it's kinda walled out here but at the same time it can roost all me with Toxic in mind. Uh, he does go for a Toxic hit, seeing of course it's very likely I would switch out, 
which is fine really and I feel that you know his HP is definitely running down to where I would probably roost if I were him so I'm gonna switch in God Warrior. God Warrior is not the best switch in here but then again Tyranitar is the close second when it comes to what's is able to switch in against that and I really don't want more damage on the Tyranitar as it already is as a uh, switching God War and he's actually going for a super fang here and I, I won't deny it yeah, I mean I have a ghost type on the field and he goes for a super fang that's pretty freaking smart you know major props there that's actually kind of awesome as um, I'm gonna be predictable as one can get and actually go for a side shock here now it won't do a lot of damage on anything on his team and beware is definitely not gonna come in but Victini is definitely an option and after thinking about it for you know seeing this again why did i not go for a shadow ball like don't fear victini and clearly i don't do that much damage there do i and yeah i really need to switch out it's it's very clear that victini is very likely it could yet again go for another u-turn so with that in mind i'm gonna switch in necromedusa yet again because i have actually enough hp to pull up and we have of course another u-turn i really felt that rocks is super awesome to have it is wi-fi pal i was feeling that was annoying as all hell as a radical, of course, the guard is gonna come in. Now, here's the thing: if it is a scarf guard shump, then I'm kind of screwed for this environment. And if it's a substitute guard shump, then I'm also kind of screwed because if I switch out here and there's gonna free setup, that's awful. So I'm just gonna go for nice beam straight on at it because I really, really, really want to ensure that whatever happens, it doesn't set up against me. So I've showed him ice beam. So the only thing I was feeling here is it's very likely now to go for the EQ, of course, trying to uh, kill me. So I'm gonna bring Bustful trying to soak that, of course, um, Earthquake, but he goes for another sub, and that is just mm -mm, awesome, thank you, great. As not even that, he actually has to see move Aerial Ace, which of course is 120 flying base move, though I will be honest, it sure is a one in KO if I'm not a bin Koba Berry, now with of course Koba Berry, it does around 60%. It's still a lot of damage, it's definitely still a lot of damage, and it was no reason me over Ice Punch here feeling that that was an opportunity, because I probably needed the help from the Leech Life. So yeah, I'm clearly not in a great spot here, as the Nerd Ear Lace is of course in the area here. But knowing that that's a very big possibility, I'm just gonna switch in Mabel, and there's Ear Lace, and we're gonna soak it just fine, not really. And I'm just gonna go for that Scarfed Ice Beam, and I kind of do realize here that my Scarf probably starts to work against me now, because here comes Baloo, which was a Pokemon I probably should have tricked my Scarf to. Hell, I would have been so great. Ice Beam does a plethora amount of damage, showing me that it's not at least specially defensive, but it could very well be physically defensive, because the Leftovers kinda, kinda pushes the boundaries here to thinking that it's a more defensive set than Tyranitar. Should be able to have speed and go for a Stealth Rock, because it's definitely going to go for Shadow Claw, that seems to be the play to make. So, with that in mind, I'm just going to try to go for Stealth Rocks here, because that will wield down both Golbat and Victini. But I should have done one thing, and I'm going to state this over and over again. Because he's speedier than I am, and I still have some speed investment, but I should definitely have switched in Guard War here to so get the Fluffy going on, because Hammer Arm would not have been a KO, and that really 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 ensures a game of me not necessarily knowing what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna start to speed this up a little because now we have a matchup here where i need to offensively pressure him but i don't have the offensive presence anymore to kind of checking i am now on a timer due to of course sandstorm world out so with that said Golbat is the one coming in here as i went directly for a moonblast which probably wasn't the best idea either sasha would have made much more sense and uh, it's very likely that he can roost against me and that's never a good thing as i'm gonna switch in mabel and mabel of course the only thing it really can do is go for ice beam and even with that in mind if i like kind of ensures that Golbat can take ice beams for day and stall out my sandstorm now my opponent trip does not do that which is and quite honestly that's great you know for what it's worth it's definitely awesome because as stated i would not have been able to KO this pokemon but i do get mabel toxic and that's also never a good thing <laughs> so as you guys can i hear on my side i definitely i felt i play my trump card a bit too early because now in the spot here where i don't do as much denting at the moment and excadrill is kind of screwed like due to the speed of the matchup left i'm not necessarily knowing how much damage i can do so, of course, this Pokemon comes in as I go to Goreheart, 
Um, as I go for Shadow Claw, that's great. I'll actually go for a Superpower. I was actually supposed to actually sack my Gorehart this time because I really felt it's very likely that he has Air Lace on his um, Panda, I was going to say, but of course the Bear. But he doesn't necessarily do that. That's just bringing Floyd. Superpower will definitely don't do anything. And I kind of need to come in fresh again. Which means that I need to sack something against the Tangrove, and I decided to go to Jelly Send because I felt it was a likely possibility that I hit him power flying, and if so, then I'm gonna soak that. But it did have the Leaf Storm, but the good thing here is due to Leaf Storm, um, Hidden Power Flying, if he has it, uh, will not be able to necessarily KO or Heart after a Leech, or a leech Life. Uh, so I go for Leech Life, it is defensive though, clearly, but I do get like around 50%. And that is pushing me to where I definitely should be able to take a hit on power flying. Now, I don't take that convincingly, which showed me that, you know, he clearly has investment there. Um, sadly, though, I don't keep attacking here. I actually go for a roost, which was kind of a waste, considering, of course, the Victini comes in. And the Victini is forced to go for a V-Create, and I don't have anything to switch into that. And I'm just going to lose my Gore Heart right here and then. So, yeah, I was kind of feeling, you know, that this is, this is pretty much wrapped. There are nothing I can do. He has good switch-ins through and through for any offensive matchup I can bring against him. And while it does suck, um, quite honestly, I'm definitely all for my opponent winning this game one really, really so. Because as I stated, I do play my T-card, Trump card a bit too early. Uh, I was assuming Beware to be not as fast due to leftovers, and quite honestly, um, that was a bad play <laughs> and yeah the thing is here i really really was i was i mean the right word for me of actually saying here is i really should have gone hyper offensive sandstorm team against him here stuffly would have done so much work for this team because neither his victini nor his guard champ was scoffed making my two scarfers pretty much a waste the guard was definitely one of those pokemon that probably wouldn't i wasn't sure whether or not i should have brought it um, but as I, I find out, like I said here, that he's not, his Victini is not Scarfed, and that is just a wrap, basically. And he also saw that I'm, after Destiny Bond with my <laughs> Frostlass switch in x just to get one shot by Hammer Arm. So that's awesome. Beware is just so cool of a Pokemon, and that really, really did some work here, surprisingly enough. Because I was not fearing Beware too much, this wife about at all, actually. So, yeah, you know, what else can I say about GG here? Um, Trevor, I do Trevor plays the smaller game from and through. I get a good start off here. I do get the predictions right here. Actually, getting rid of nine tails would watch my number one issues as I couldn't actually maintain my sand. But uh, I think there's where it all ends. I mean, basically, once I lost Tyranitar, uh, I didn't do anything to kind of get out of a very, very tough situation because due to that, Victini just got dash much stronger. I do believe I have Victini under control until Tyranitar went down, and I'm still kicking myself over that, because it wouldn't have done anything if I switched out Tyranitar for, of course, Guard War, and basically soaked that, of course, Hammer Arm. Mainly because since I actually get the, the fluffy ability, I also become able to soak that hit. So it's a bad play on my part, and quite honestly, if you do Judgment Call like that, you are going to lose, and that's the game we play, and I say that I've been a bit on stress this week, so I'm glad we actually got this game out of the way, but it's very, very clear that Trey was overall the smarter Wi-Fi battle throughout this matchup, really, and he's definitely deserving of this, of course, <laughs> win. Um, now, with that said, you know, next week will be a bit of a break week, and I get the chance to adjust my team a little bit, and hopefully I can adjust it enough to my taste, because I really feel that the bulky offense concept is not... It's not that it isn't working, it is just that I feel that I'm forced to play a way that I don't do too well against. Uh, I still build a team with, you know, with low stamina, I always do, and this was a 31 turn battle of me just trying to keep myself afloat. And I rather lose after 20 turns than actually waiting out at 10 more turns of me just trying to survive something I can't, can't withstand. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is worth, Trev, thank you of course so much for this battle, great job buddy, I really really appreciate what you brought to the table. And for everyone who's been watching, sorry for not winning this time either, we are 2 for 2 now, so it's not, it's not too bad, but at the same time I really can't risk myself losing much more, so I really hope that the free agency that we're gonna do next week are going to help my team, because I have a problem. Uh, it's tough of actually building with this team in mind. I didn't think that would be the case, but now that we're here, yeah, that's it's not what I want. So anyway, guys, thank you of course so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.
Bye.